Good evening. This is John Bailey. This is People to be Heard, the program for people who have something to say, have their say. Tonight, you've got Julie Killian from Ryan, New York. Welcome to the show, Ms. Thank Killian. Thank you so much. Right. And of course, I'm with Peter Katz and Jim Benaroff. Ms. Killian is running in the 37th State Senate District, and which covers the following towns up there on the screen. And um, she is uh, a graduate of, has a BS in chemical engineering from Notre Dame. She earned an MBA in finance from NYU Stern School of Business and has worked for Merrill Lynch and Citibank. She has all of so has been very active in Rye. She was appointed to the Common Council and then re-elected in her own right and she is now deputy mayor. So the question right off the bat is why are you running? Because I have to. Yes. I have been watching the issues at the state level for, for quite a while, and I'm not happy with what I see, and I can't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. I decided to run on January 22nd, 2015, which was the way the day that Shelley Silver was arrested, because I felt like with him gone, you know, maybe real change could happen in Albany, and obviously soon thereafter, uh, Dean Skelos was gone, and uh, there's new leadership in Albany. Uh, not happy with a lot that goes on in Albany, but I do feel like with new leadership and some new blood up there, we can really make a difference. Yeah. On your campaign literature that I've seen, there's no real feature of a party relationship. Which line are you going to be on? I am a registered Republican, and I'm running on the Republican, conservative, independence, and reform party lines. And, and I don't put a party on. A lot of people do comment on that. Um, because I don't self-identify. I mean, I am a registered Republican, but I don't self-identify as that. And I have always been one to look at the candidate rather than the party. Well, if you're going to be on the Republican line, do you support the top of the ticket, the Republican <laughs> candidate for president? Who is that guy, anyway? Yeah, who is that yeah, guy? Right. That's the problem. I don't know that we know who that guy that yeah. guy that guy is. <laughs> right. Um, as I said, I've always supported uh, and looked at where someone's stance on the issues are and not at the party. So I am in the process of deciding, like everybody else is out there, and I've had, I've had trouble figuring out where they both stand on in, the issues because there's so much media attention on the personalities and the crazy things that they both do. So I, I, I get that complaint very often from in, people about where. And looking at, where at, at your biographical material, it appears that, that your background is to try to work on what we traditionally might think of as democratic social issues. You seem to be very socially and people oriented. I am. So Well, I, I have five children and uh, so I have seen a lot with five children and uh, particularly the, the, the issues that I care about. Um, I've worked a lot with kids with, with autism, raising money to help for research. Um, I, I have a child that's on the autistic spectrum. I uh, have a child with Lyme's disease. That's another thing that, that is becoming very important in our lives. So, you know, long-term chronic health issues uh, in your kids can spur you to do yeah. a, a lot of things. And um, I don't know, I've always, I've been on the board um, of a soup kitchen and social services agency called POTS, part of the solution, which is my favorite name of an organization. And, um, you know, I've always felt to help those in need. It's just part of who I am. I, I grew up with a dad who was always going to work uh, in a soup kitchen and he was a great cook. and. I love the fact that I would always go and work with him. So it's it's something I've been doing for my entire life, and it's important to me. And you know, people do, I, people sometimes get upset with me that I don't have have my party on the ticket. And I said it's because you want to put me in a box. And, and often people want to do that, and I, I don't really fit into that little, that yeah. typical uh, little box. I'm you know. Yeah, I'm very... your corruption and ethics mm -hmm. um, uh, interest. Did the governor's ethics uh, reforms go far enough? You parallel Senator and David Buckwell's efforts to affect pension reform, but how do you think this might be achieved since no one is going to vote to cut their pension? No, you're right about that. Uh, we need term limits. To me, mm -hmm. that's the single most important thing to get change in Albany because we just need to change the people that are there. We've had uh, people there far too long on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm that uh, are too invested in keeping themselves in Albany and keeping their job as their first concern. And, and I really do think the people should be the first concern, not the politicians, not the special interests. And the only way to get there is to change who's there. How, so, would, you get, how would you get the term limits legislation moving? Uh, 
I mean, I know you'd introduce the bill, but what, what do you think I'll would talk, stimulate? Because I'll talk about it all the time, and I won't vote for anything until we get a vote out there. I and see. what do you see as some of the other issues? What about uh, taxes, education? Are, are those well, uh, particularly on your plate? Yes, um, yes. Um, education is is incredibly important for all our kids, and uh, we do get discriminated against in Westchester. Um, by the regional cost index, which is not an appropriate number you're, you're for us. You're talking about state aid. To, S yes, to yes, state aid. Um, and in Albany, they view Westchester as wealthy, which it is. It's just not all wealthy. And we do um, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse get far more school aid uh, to their paid for by the New York State taxpayers um, than we do in Yonkers or Port Chester for their students. So that that really needs to change. Mm -hmm. However, in the, on the, edu and the education issue, if you uh, try and divide this, the state aid more to the poor districts that need it, that will raise taxes in the uh, wealthier districts, which they are not going to like. That's, but that's not how, how, how it's not that you give more to Yonkers and you take it away from Rye or Bronxville. That's not, that's not how, how it works. It's mm -hmm. going to be over the entire state. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, I, I feel strongly that kids in our district, particularly in uh, New Rochelle, Mount Vernon, which is not my district, but mm -hmm. um, I'll fight. You know, as I like to say, I'll, I'll fight for everybody up there. Mm -hmm. uh, How do you think the formula should be changed? Well, the regional there's a regional cost index, which is assigned to Westchester, is out of whack. It's mm -hmm. more representative of upstate costs um, than uh, downstate costs. So Long Island, New York, and, and that's just a multiplier. So we just mm -hmm. get less mm -hmm. right off the bat because our multiplier is lower and it should be higher. So that's just one thing. I don't know, I, know, I don't hear my opponent talking about it. I don't hear anybody else in Westchester talking about it, but that, that has to change and that will be the first thing that I focus on. There's been an argument that a lot of the state money ends up going to New York City because of politics, Democratic uh, mayor in New York City, Democratic governor in, in Albany, although they may not necessarily like each other or be best of friends or be best of political allies, nonetheless, New York City is often seen uh, as a, um, a draw on money which could be coming to the Westchester suburbs yeah. or even Long Island uh, and some other areas. Exactly, of the state. Long Island and New York City. Uh, so, you know, we need to get together as the legislators in Westchester and fight for our fair share in Westchester. And I don't see enough of that. I don't see enough talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see people standing up and fighting for the people of Westchester, and that's what I want to do. Well, how do you think you would be able to actually get things done in Albany? Mm -hmm. if, if you go in as a Republican uh, conservative, you will not necessarily be uh, in the majority um, in government in Albany. So how, how does a minority representative up there uh, in the state Senate get something done? Well, first of all, I can get along with anybody, and I will work with anybody to get things done. I have a four-year track record of working with everybody uh, in Rye. Uh, but I will be in the majority in the Senate. Uh, I am fully confident that the Republicans will keep the majority in the Senate, so that has mm. a certain amount of uh, power power there to get things done. And I. Um, I work, I work well with people. I always have. It's one of the reasons I've been successful uh, in this business. And uh, I'll speak out. That, and that's the thing I think that upsets me the most about what I see in Albany on, on both sides of the aisle, not speaking out to the wrong that's, that's done up there. Yeah. In, in Westchester County, at the moment, Rye is going up against the county government on the subject of Playland. Yes. Uh, Rye is, uh, has filed a, an Article 78 proceeding, which is a lawsuit designed to block county action of this contract that the county ha has entered into. Uh, so um, how does this local issue play into your campaign for a statewide office? Well, let, let me explain the, the local issue um, a little bit, but I'll first say that I am, I am in support of, of the deal at at Playland, I do think it needs to be revitalized. It's a great resource um, for all of us, and we need people around the county to be able to go there and be able to go to a revitalized place. Uh, however, uh, the uh, when the county filed the environmental assessment form, they did not do it as completely as the city of Rye would have liked, and we don't believe that they did it uh, uh, the way that the uh, rules require. And they, in the environmental assessment form, they refer not just to the projects um, that are in question right now, which I'm all in favor of those projects, but to sort of any project going forward at Playland. 
So without that action, we would not be Why able wants to. Why the final cut? Say. But I do. I want to say I do feel like my. Um, I was not necessarily in favor of filing the Article 78, but I. The thing that I really want to see is the city council and Rye sitting in a room with the administration from the county I and hammering so. it out. So there's a, a lot, a lot. I don't believe we should be, you know, fighting this out in the press or, or by emails or by letters. We, sure. we need to understand exactly where both sides are and we need to sit in a room. And that's that's something that I have you, been a proponent of. It has not happened yet. Um, but I do believe it's a way to get things done, right. whether it's now or in Albany. Tax cuts. You advocate tax cuts to make New York State more attractive to business. You advocate across the board tax cuts and common sense regulatory reforms. Do you mean property tax cuts? Do you mean state income tax cuts? Caps on assessment increases? Deregulation of business? And how do you replace the revenue lost? And how? New York so, makes it incredibly difficult to do business here. There's 750,000 business regulations in New York. I, I don't know, and I, I hear this from the businesses, I don't know how everybody can keep track of them. If you're, if you're one of the big boys, you can hire accountants and lawyers to help you figure it out. But I've been going around in my community for five months to events and to uh, small businesses, and they're being crushed. They do one little teeny thing wrong, they get a fine of $1,000. $1,000 at a little independent bookstore, that's a lot of money. So we need to, I, the first and foremost, I think we need to clean up our, our business regulations. And I know there's been a study done on it, and they went around the state, mm -hmm. um, and there's things very easy things that can be done, and they're just not done, and that's what frustrates me. And we need to make it work for, for the taxpayers and the small businesses. They're being crushed, and the small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Um, as far as property tax, um, we obviously don't control that in Albany, but what we do control is the mandates that we keep putting on the school districts and the local municipalities. I certainly see that as, as a council person, and we, th that needs to stop. There's crushing mandates, the unfunded mandates, and there's there's things that can happen. You know, look at there's a lot of crazy laws up there that that make New York more expensive to live and to do business in, and that needs it. We're the, we're last. We're last in business friendly lists. We're the worst business climate. We're the worst place to retire. We have the highest taxes of the nation. I mean, how can that be? We're such a great state. So, I'm staying, and I'm going to fight for us. Um, now, the mandate relief is always interesting. Be everybody that has had has won has really used mandate relief as the answer to everything. But if mandates are relieved, and then you have to cut services. Now, no, not necessarily. Well, who pays for it if they keep well, the counties down? Things, low, um, things low happen, low. like recently the state um, decided that, that schools had to put additional carbon monoxide uh, monitors. They already have them mm -hmm. in the places that they should have them. And, they, and I, I don't know why this was done, but they said, you got to do it right now. But what happens in a school district if you have to spend that money? Now, our schools are safe. There's plenty of carbon monoxide. They need to put more. And they make them do it right away. So what happens? You take money from some other thing that you're trying to do in your schools, and then you pay for that. So you don't necessarily. So, so there's a lot of there's just what? dozens and dozens, some of them little. That's a littler thing, no. and you know the 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 uh, calendar years of the local budgets, the school budgets, and the, and the state never never match up. So there's always these you know uh, off. Kind of, so, but there and the, but there's big things like the, like the Wicks law. On, on the construction, on school and municipal construction, which mm -hmm. which I which is shown to cost on construction projects twenty to thirty percent more. Why don't we just get rid of it? Well, are you why, why, why like are we? Are, are you are you advocating yeah. the the typical Republican yeah. conservative philosophy that we need smaller government, regardless of of whether anyone gets hurt at a social level? I, I don't equate smaller government with getting hurt at a, at a social level. Uh, I equate smaller government. The government needs to keep us safe, help those in need, mm -hmm. are really the two two biggest things that the government does. So no, I, I'm I I I think that's the problem. That's the typical view. You know, these big bad Republicans want less government, and the, and they're going to hurt the needy. How I look at it as, it costs money 
to do all these wonderful things we want to do, support the arts, support the needy. If we don't have a healthy economy, if we don't streamline our regulations and help these businesses thrive, give people jobs, and, and have a healthy, vibrant business economy, so people stay here. I have kids that are graduated from college. My daughter took a year to get a job. She's working now, which is exciting. But I want our kids to come back here. I want our kids to stay here. I want our seniors to stay here. But if that's not happening and we don't have a healthy economy, we're not able to afford to do all the things we want to do, funding the arts, helping those in need. So it, it, it goes hand in, you know, I just, I don't, I don't like that characterization that less government means you don't help. But the if you want government, to preserve the services, somebody has to pay for it. It's been, been the county lately. But, but, mm -hmm. but more government mm -hmm. is piling on more regulation, piling on more things. You have more regulation, you need more people to monitor it mm -hmm. the state. It just it doesn't make sense to me. The, the other, um, the occupational licensing in New York, I, I was in a neighborhood recently. I walk a lot of neighborhoods, and I met a man that has a transportation business, and he said to me, um, I can't get my guys licensed. So I, I called, he called my opponent who said, okay, I'll help you. They were able to speed it up, but my opponent's answer to the solution was hire more people so you get it done quicker. I'm like, how about if we streamline the process and make them accountable? So that's, I think, the difference certainly between me and my opponent. Like throwing more money at everything and making government bigger doesn't make sense to me. We need to streamline things and make people in government more accountable. Jim, you what, what specifically do you think are your opponent's biggest weaknesses? That he doesn't speak out against the things that go on in Albany. I, I think we all know uh, about all the, uh, you know, Shelley Silver's chief of staff raped two women. And there was all kinds of sexual harassment in Albany. I happen to have a friend who lives in Rye, mom in Rye. She was one of the, not one of the ones that were raped, thank God, but uh, it, that as a woman, and, and it's, not, it's not just my opponent, it, it's everybody on both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats. Someone told me the other day that, that some of the Republicans didn't speak out because they were worried that Shelley was going to take away their, their office and put them in the basement. I say, bring it on. Put me in the basement because you're going to hear about it. I just, that's what's upsetting to me. <laughs> they it, it, don't it, speak out against op, because they're yes. too scared. And yes. that's really, really upsetting to but me. It seems, fear, it seems as if corruption in Albany is one of the few nonpartisan things going on. <laughs> in, in, Everybody's in against it, but nobody so, does too much about it. If, yes. if you are elected, what can you, as as just one person in the Senate, do to to change things? I mean, you could introduce a bill, but but how do you how do you get it passed? How how do you change the morality of people serving in a place like Albany? Well, I mean, if if for instance, if you take away their pensions, if for um, if you take away a pension from a convicted politician who's done a crime related to their office, the next guy is going to be like, oh. You know, I better be careful because nothing nothing happens to to most of them. Some of them go to jail for a little while, but you 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 have to take stuff away from them. So there's no there's almost incentive to do it. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's not just the the illegal corruption. There's the legal corruption that goes on there. But they're incented to to do things because there's no penalties and nobody speaks out. So well, if if, if you <coughs> extend the incentive thing, uh, it throughout government and especially in New York State, you see what's called double dipping. Yes. Where, which is a practice where uh, state em employees at all levels, uh, be, Particularly it, be, it, be it the elected level, be it at, at a school superintendent level, at, at all levels, employees are almost encouraged to work to the retirement day, take the retirement, then come back on the payroll and do the same job as a consultant or something like that and get double the money that you were mm -hmm. getting you know from the taxpayers is that reflective of of perhaps uh, uh, an attitude which could can use some uh, correction um, in the old days we used to think when when people said public service there was almost a sacrifice involved in going to work for government or, and doing things in public service police fire sanitation, um, working at, at a desk in, in City Hall, Is it uh, as, uh, yeah, being a teacher mm -hmm. meant you, you were making a, a sacrifice mm -hmm. in, in, some, in some ways. Have we lost that? 
To a certain extent, we have. And if you want to talk about double dipping, I think the most egregious double dipping is the 18 people in the legislature, which is 12 assembly people and six senators, that actually get a salary and a pension for the same job. So you're talking about people leaving a job and going to a different job. Yeah. There's or, so, or and there's back, some, or going there's, back to the same. There's job. some loophole yes. in New York State law that if you were elected prior to 1995, yeah, you, you can you retire at the end. Too. You can retire at the end of your session when you've already been reelected, yeah. and then start again. That's unconscionable to me for the exact same job yes. that you get a pension and a salary. Yeah. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk education for a minute. <clears throat> um, on what, how you feel about. You advocated strongly that the um, citizens should um, contact the federal government and tell them not to penalize districts so that are, have opted out at a mm -hmm. very high level. And on the, so I would like to know, where do you stand on local control? How much local uh, school districts should control their own destinies? And uh, what should the state control? And who makes the final decision? You know, assessment tests particularly, do, do districts, should districts design their own assessments and have the state approve them as to see whether they're good? That I, I don't think should happen. There she probably should be at the, at the state level general <clears throat> tests. And that way you can compare students um, mm -hmm. across uh, districts, across counties. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you can't, and, and part of it is just because the time involved in creating these tests, it would just be, um, a, really a waste of money for each district and put more money. But things like uh, an evaluation system, mm -hmm. um, we had a good evaluation system in the, in the city of Rye, and then all of a sudden we needed to go over and change to what Cuomo wanted. So mm -hmm. I think when too often there's too much of that telling this, this is the way we need to do it. So it's got, it's got to be a balance. There's a lot of different issues that, that, that you've brought up. There has to be some balance. Um, there, there needs, there, some stuff has to come down from the state. Some, I would say an overall structure um, and testing, certainly, but uh, really a lot of the very specific curriculum discussions. I mean, I grew up in Connecticut. I was born in Mount Vernon. Um, my parents moved to, to Connecticut when I was five, and that's where I went to um, middle school and high school. And uh, we didn't. We were always like, wow, those kids in New York, they have those regents tests. We didn't have anything then. So uh, the, the regents, I... I I'm not convinced that the whole Regents Board, because I think that's another level of, of, of government, maybe we, we, you know, maybe doesn't work as much. But overall, um, I think testing should, should probably come down from that. Because you need, you need some basis of comparison. So you advocate um, state but I do, control I do think, of the assessments. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. I just think there's, there's just way too many decisions that they're making at the federal level, too. And, that, and that's what you brought up to, yeah. to begin with, where, um, you know, they said, okay, you know, you can let kids opt out, but now if you do it, we're going to penalize you. And those, yeah. by becoming a school in need of improvement, yeah. that adds lots of layers of regulation and monitoring that our schools can't afford. As you're making the rounds going door to door, meeting people uh, in, in your campaign, do you find that people are concerned with local issues or are, are what we hear at the national level uh, coming to the fore? For example, immigration uh, seems to, to have dominated everything, at least this, this past week, certainly, in the presidential campaign. And does that trickle down, to, to, to coin a phrase, no. uh, to your level of campaigning? No, I've, I've been out in the district uh, walking neighborhoods for five months. And that's not what I hear. Uh, I hear the most that people want change on a national level and on um, a state level, and their taxes are too high. Those are the two things I hear the most. And they're frustrated. I can't tell you how many people I go in the house, they're like, I might not be here on election day because my house is on the market and I'm moving. And these other five people in the neighborhood are, are moving. I'm talking to um, a volunteer fireman in Portchester the other day who um, said he's moving his family to Connecticut because he can't afford it anymore. It's, it's Is that a function uh, of people's view of the economy, the local economy here in Westchester? Or is it is it just that, that our taxes in Westchester are so high and taxes are separate from their overall view of the economy? Well, it's it's all it's all related, but very much it's the property taxes that are are sending people uh, over is over the, the line. That what is your answer to that about property tax uh, creep? Property tax creep. Uh, less mandated things give 
um, more flexibility to to um, local municipalities and school districts. We, ta we talked about the mandates mm -hmm. earlier. There are things we can do to take away uh, the the uh, crushing mandates, and um, that will. Uh, I, I don't. I would love to lower property taxes. That, that, that's a really nice goal, and that would be a goal. But I, I, we're trying to tamp them from going up so much. And New York City needs a property tax we, 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 tax cap. You know that New York City. Most people don't know that New York City doesn't have a tax cap, uh, hmm. but the rest of the state does, and, and they, uh, they, they need it. Uh, so it's. Um, I, I would say though taxes, people, um, and they want their they want their they want their kids to be able to come back here. I know you know a lot of people in my situation where kids are coming back from college and they want it to be a vibrant economy. You know Westchester, we do have businesses coming to Westchester. Where we're killing is the small businesses, and that's they're they're the backbone of our economy. In, in our last minute or so, how do you sum up your pitch to the voters of Westchester? I'm a fresh face. I have new ideas, and I get things done. And I, as a mom, and uh, elected uh, leader in Rye, I, I think I know what people what people want, and uh, they want change in Albany, and they want to make the government work for them. And uh, if you want to Albany to keep the same, you can stick with my opponent. But I, we need change there, and uh, to to get change in Albany, you have to change who you send there. And uh, you know, we we the Albany we have now for years has given us the same high taxes, you know, it's the worst place to retire, the uh, business climate is bad, we have the loud, largest out-migration of any state in the Union. We, we have the greatest state, so I'm, I was born here, I've chosen to stay here and fight for our state. Mm -hmm. I, and so, the last thing that you want to say to the voters on the show? Check me out at juliekillian.com and please consider me in November. I'm going to work hard for you in Albany. Okay. Julie Killian running against George Latimer in the, in the state Senate District 37. You have been heard. And good night for Peter Katz, Jim Benaroff, John Bailey. Thanks for having me.